Video lesson eight is going to be on Dalton's partial pressure and gas collection. This is an SAT2 topic. So again, we'll be talking about partial pressure, we'll be doing some problems, and we'll be talking about gas collection, and we'll be doing problems as well in this video. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is Dalton's law of partial pressure. And as the diagram shows, if you have a bunch of different gases in a tank, you can more or less determine the entire pressure of the tank based on the partial pressures of all the gases. So the total pressure, otherwise called P total, inside of a container is equal to the partial pressure, otherwise known as Px, due to each gas. The partial pressures, which can be for gas one, two, and three, is the contribution by that gas. So your total pressure of the entire container is the sum of all the partial pressures combined. We can find out the pressure of the final container by simply adding up the pressure of the original containers. However, if the question wants your answer in kilopascals, make sure you convert everything into kilopascals first. If you are given different variables, like in atmospheres or in millimeters of mercury, you have to make sure you convert everything into your final correct answer. Also remember that it's not necessarily just three different gases. It could be many, it could be fewer than three. Like in the example above, there's five different gases that make up air. It is according to how many that is given to you. So let's try this question. What is the total pressure in a balloon filled with air if the pressure of the oxygen is 170 millimeters of mercury and the pressure of nitrogen is 620? Well, for the first one, you just have to add the two together. 620 plus 170 gives you a total of 790 millimeters of mercury. That would be the entire pressure of the balloon. In our second balloon, the total pressure is 1.3 atmospheres. Therefore, what is the pressure of oxygen in atmospheres if the pressure of nitrogen is 720. In this situation, you have to convert nitrogen's pressure into atmospheres. That means that nitrogen has a pressure of 0 0.9 atmospheres. Therefore, if nitrogen is 0 0.9 and your total is 1.3, you find the difference, which is 0 0.4, to tell you the pressure of just oxygen in atmospheres. So again, thinking about this idea, on the left jar, we have what appears to be the pressure of hydrogen, which is 2.9 atmospheres. And in the middle jar, we have the pressure of just helium, which is 7.2 atmospheres. On their own, they have their own unique amount of molecules and their own unique pressures. But when you look on the far right-hand side for P total, you're noticing you're just adding together the pressures of the hydrogen and the helium gases. So another way to use Dalton's law of partial pressure is to find the partial pressure of a component A in an ideal gas mixture. So we're going to use this formula PA equals XA times P. Now remember, these A's represent the pressure of one gas, and XA is what we call the mole fraction of the same gas. The P that is in yellow is the pressure that, that is the total amount. So a mole fraction is still moles of gas A over how many moles in total are in the container. So to do this, what is the pressure of gas A? If that's the thing you're looking for, that's going to be your X. You then look at the question, figure out how many moles gas A is. That goes as your numerator. You divide that by your denominator, which is the total moles, times the total pressure. So this formula is going to be used when they don't give you information about partial pressures at all. All they give you is the pressure of the total amount, and they give you a whole bunch of moles of each gas. So here's a, an example. A container of gas consists of the following mixtures of gases. If the total pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, we're going to now determine the partial pressure of each gas. Now, see how we cannot find each partial pressure without using those moles? That's why we're going to go back and use that formula. First thing you're going to want to do is add up all the moles. So 20, 26, 30. Your calculator right there. I know. 30, though? You just punch it, punch it in so you get the sound effects. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, say 5 moles and then hit. So we're going to add 5 moles, 6 moles, 12 moles, 15 moles. And we're going to get 38 moles. It's way off. <laughs> so your total amount of moles is 38. Now, how do I find the mole ratio of helium? 
So you're now going to take the mole ratio, which is the amount of helium divided by the total amount of all the moles. So you're going to do 5 divided by 38. And that number, when you do that, 5 divided by 38, you're then multiplying it by 760, and that tells you the pressure of just helium. So 5 over 38 multiplied by 760, you should get a partial pressure of 99.9 or 100 millimeters of mercury. That is how much pressure 5 moles of helium is exerting in this one container. Let's do the second one for you. If you have 6 moles of carbon dioxide, again, you're doing 6 over 38 moles. When you do that, and then you multiply it by, again, the total pressure of 760, you get 120 millimeters of mercury. As you progressively do these, you'll notice that if you then add up the sum of all the millimeters of mercury, you should then finally get 760. You guys can do the 12 moles of neon and the 15 moles of xenon on your own right now. So here's another example. 17 grams of hydrogen and 17 grams of carbon dioxide are placed in 54.5 liter container at 48 degrees Celsius. What is the total pressure of the container? Notice that we have grams in this case. We also have liters, we also have degrees Celsius. What do you think we need to do first? The first thing I would do is I would convert the masses of the hydrogen into moles. If one mole is two grams, then how many moles is 17 grams? And I do the exact same thing for the carbon dioxide. We don't know what the pressure is exactly, so therefore, what formula would we use to find pressure? We know how many moles we have in total. We know our volume, and we have a Celsius degree. I believe we have to use the PV is equal to NRT formula. But notice that you first need the total number of moles, so the hydrogen and the carbon dioxide, to find the total pressure from the ideal gas law. Now plug in all your variables into the ideal gas law. P is going to be the X value. You don't know what it is. The volume is going to be 54.5. You're going to set those equal to the total number of moles of hydrogen and carbon dioxide multiplied by the ideal gas law constant and then multiply it by the temperature in Kelvin. So again, that is Celsius plus 273. Right. And finally, when you get your answer, that is the total pressure of the container. Now, if you know the total pressure of the container after you did the ideal gasless problem, you can go back and figure out what is the pressure of just hydrogen. So again, it's the moles of hydrogen over the total times the pressure you just calculated, and that will tell you what pressure is going to be for hydrogen. You can also do the same thing for carbon dioxide, or you could just subtract the pressure of hydrogen from the total pressure of the container. Demonstration. I am going to react hydrochloric acid with magnesium, which of course produces hydrogen gas. The beaker acts as a water reservoir in which there are two upturned water-filled test tubes. If one of these tubes is placed over the end of the delivery tube, every bubble of gas can be seen as it is produced. As soon as a tube is full, gas bubbles begin to escape into the reservoir once again. This enables the user to choose when to replace the tube with another. So when we want to collect gas over water, which is a common technique in chemistry, we are going to have to think about two different factors. The total pressure of anything that we collect is going to be a combination of the gas itself and the vapor pressure from the water that it's immersing through. So when we look at our formula, we're going to say the total pressure is equal to the pressure of just the gas that we're collecting and the pressure of the water that we're also collecting at the same time. So how do we know the vapor pressure of water? We need to use reference table H. Reference table H is vapor pressures, and that will tell us what the pressure of water is at different temperatures. So CO2 is gathered over water at 22 degrees Celsius and at 1.2 atmospheres. 
we want to find out the pressure of the CO2 was in the 1.2 atmospheres. The reason why we know it's a partial pressure is because specifically it is said we gathered this over water. And remember, some of the water will evaporate into the total pressure that is assigned to us. Now, table H has the values for water vapor at 22 degrees Celsius. We are using an older table right now, which has millimeters of mercury on it. So you're going to want to convert the millimeters of mercury or the atmospheres into the same units in order to get uh, the math done correctly. What you need to gain from this question is that your total pressure is 1.2 atmospheres. If you then look at this chart and you come over to where it says Celsius is 22, you would then notice that you have 19.8 millimeters of mercury or 19.8 torr. When you convert 19.8 millimeters of mercury or 19.8 torr, you can then figure out that you have roughly 0.03 atmospheres. So now you know your pressure total and you know the pressure of the gas. Of one of the gases. So now you know your pressure total, which is 1.2, and you know the pressure of the water, which is going to be 0.03. So therefore, what is the difference between 1.2 and 0.03? That answer tells you the pressure of the carbon dioxide gas that you have gained. Let's try another question. Hydrogen is gathered over water at 60 degrees Celsius and at 97.2 kilopascals. What is the pressure of hydrogen gas? Again, this is in kilopascals, and our chart on the screen is in millimeters of mercury. First, find water on the chart at 60 degrees Celsius, which says that it is 149.4 millimeters of mercury. Take 149.4 millimeters of mercury and convert it into kilopascals. You end up with an answer of 19.9 kilopascals which means in 97.2 kilopascals, water accounts for 19.9 kilopascals of it. If you subtract 19.9 kilopascals from 97.2 kilopascals, that will tell us how much hydrogen is in our entire pressure.